Someone recently posted a question in Varsity asking me why they should diversify their stock portfolio. He wanted to know if diversification helps in enhancing the portfolio returns or in mitigating the portfolio risk. The straightforward answer to this is that diversification helps in reducing the portfolio risk. Risk, as you know, are of two types, systematic and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk is the risk that is prevalent in the market as a whole. An example of systematic risk can be bad monsoons. A bad monsoon will impact your portfolio negatively as much as it would impact mine. Unsystematic risk, on the other hand, is risk specific to the stock that you've invested in. For example, the price of an IT stock going down because of high attrition rate is a company-specific risk. It will only impact the investors of this particular company and it won't impact other investors in the market. When you diversify a stock portfolio, you mitigate or control the unsystematic risk. Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and in this video, I'll demonstrate how diversification helps in mitigating the portfolio risk. Before I proceed, you must understand that risk is expressed in terms of volatility. If we are talking about a portfolio of stocks, then the risk here refers to the portfolio's volatility. In order to demonstrate this, let us start by assuming that my portfolio contains a single stock. I've taken the example of Adani Green on this. So let me go ahead and calculate the portfolio risk of my single stock portfolio. I've considered the last one year's closing price for this calculation. You can download the data freely from both the exchange's website. So here are the broad steps involved in calculating the portfolio volatility. I'm doing this on MS Excel, but you can do this on any spreadsheet that you have. Step one, neatly arrange the dates and the corresponding closing prices on those dates. Step two, calculate the daily returns of the stock. Step three, you assume a certain investment. In this case, it happens to be 10,000 rupees invested in Adani Green and see how the 10,000 rupee varies on a daily basis. This obviously is dependent on the daily returns of the stock. Step four, you see how the investment itself varies. Step five, apply the standard deviation function on the investment returns and calculate the standard deviation. What you get in step five is the daily standard deviation of your investment. Step six, scale the daily standard deviation to a yearly standard deviation by multiplying it with the square root of time. In this case, it happens to be 252, as a year is considered to have 252 trading sessions. As you can see, my single stock portfolio's risk or volatility is nearly 55%. This means over the next one year, my investment can go down as much as 55% with a certain degree of confidence. Let me go ahead and add another stock to this portfolio. Or in other words, let me try to diversify this portfolio by making it a two-stock portfolio. Post-diversification, I would like to see what happens to the risk. Now, along with Adani Green, I'm also adding Zomato to my portfolio. Now, the steps to calculate the portfolio risk remains the same. One thing to note here, for sake of simplicity, I've assumed that this is an equal weighted portfolio. Meaning, I've divided my investment amount of rupees 10,000 into two equal parts and invested in both the stocks, that's Adani Green and Zomato. With the addition of another stock, the risk has greatly reduced. The two-stock portfolio now has a portfolio volatility of 44% as opposed to a single-stock portfolio's volatility of 55%. Now, what if I add another stock, maybe Colgate, to this two-stock portfolio and make it a three-stock portfolio? 
Now my portfolio contains Adani Green, Zomato and Colgate. As you may have guessed, the portfolio risk will reduce. Let's go ahead and make this calculation and find out to what extent the risk reduces. One thing to note, again for the sake of simplicity, I'm assuming that this is an equal weighted portfolio with roughly about 3,300 invested in each stock. The three stock portfolio's risk or volatility has dropped to 32% from a two stock portfolio's volatility of 44%. Now here is a quick comparison of how the daily standard deviation and the volatility stacks up for one stock, two stock and three stock portfolio. In fact, as you continue to add more stocks to your portfolio, the unsystematic risk of your portfolio reduces further. Which is why they say you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. Does that mean that you can endlessly add stocks and eliminate risk altogether? Not really. Research says that the effect of diversification in terms of risk elimination starts to fade after you add a certain number of stocks. Here is how the graph looks. As you add more stocks, unsystematic risk, which is the diversifiable risk, starts to reduce. But beyond a certain number of stocks in your portfolio, diversification does not add much value. This number is somewhere between 20 to 30 stocks in your portfolio. By the way, the risk that still exists after you perfectly diversify your portfolio is called the systematic risk. Systematic risk cannot be diversified. Systematic risk can be hedged. In this chapter of Varsity, I've described how you can hedge your portfolio and eliminate systematic risk. Do give it a quick read. Before I end this video, here are a few good practices to build a well-diversified portfolio. Have at least 20 to 30 stocks in your portfolio. Ensure you do not have concentrated bets on any single stock. Have exposure to multiple sectors and avoid concentrated sectoral bets. Have stocks across multiple market capitalization. Try and avoid having more than two or three stocks from the same sector. Lastly, ensure that you don't over diversify your portfolio. If you can think of any other points that can help in building a good diversified portfolio, then please do comment and let us know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.